Hi, my name is Trudy Reiter and welcome. Hi, I'm Natsumi Sakuma. Hi guys, my name is Floris Terbeek. Hi, I'm Aurelia. Hi, I'm Anaho Tujo. Hello and welcome. I'm Susan. My name is Asami Nagao. Hello, this is my chef Hey, I'm Sue Kaiser. Hi, my name is Tilia Tapa. My name is Martijn Nettenbrijms. And welcome to the final event of WordSkills Japan. Welcome to the great finals and awarding event of this WordSkills Challenge with the focus on Japan. It is a wonderful example of cooperation between Japan and the Netherlands to create awareness and concrete solutions for water, energy and food challenges. We are happy that, as summer athletes, we finally had an Olympic summer edition of Wet Skills after the event during the Winter Olympics in South Korea. We prefer liquid water instead of ice. First of all, a big thanks to DOB Academy for hosting this event. DOB Academy offers offshore energy education for professionals and works together with the Dutch wave makers and Wet Skills to simulate renewable energy education among students. DOB Academy also cooperated with both Nagasaki Ocean Academy and Nippon Foundation to educate both students and professionals in Japan. Also, as an ambassador, I would like to thank Dutch Wave Makers and Wet Skills Foundation. Wet Skills challenges bring diversity, teamwork, adaptivity, and respect. These values are also inevitable for us windsurfers, even in the case where we have a solo sport. In the past few weeks, you have committed yourself to the various water challenges that we face in the world. By working together as a diverse team with respect to each other, you are able to come up with out-of-the-box solutions for real-life problems of sector partners and water, energy, food nexus. You have all seen us perform at our best during the Olympic Games in Tokyo. We now look forward to seeing your achievements. Good morning everyone from the Netherlands, good morning everyone here and uh, good afternoon to everyone calling from Japan. And welcome to the Wet Skills Finals of Wet Skills Japan 2021, the Olympic edition. We're at the moment uh, broadcasted live uh, at the Team in El Tokyo Expo. And well, uh, we're very excited to have this well event close off of, of six weeks full of entertainment and hard work and, and cooperation between the Netherlands and Japan and so many more countries. Um, well, who am I? <laughs> uh, my name is Flora van der Heide. I work for Wet Skills uh, since 2016 already. Um, and well, for, for Japan, I've been the uh, supervisor uh, along with Johanna and with uh, Johan Oost and uh, your MC for today. So welcome. Um, where are we now? Um, Wet Skills event in Japan is not mainly organized only by uh, wet skills but luckily we had two very great partners who helped us with this um, first the uh, dutch wave makers who will have a program after this finals um, and also dob academy where we are right now um, and right next to me is the co-founder i'd say and director uh, of db academy jan van der temple Welcome, Jan. Well, thank you for actually, you're welcoming us. But yeah, yeah, welcome to you <laughs> as well. Thank you for being our host. Um, <laughs> thank you for having us again. Um, how are you doing? Yeah, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much, uh, Floor. And uh, welcome to you and to all here in, uh, in Delft in a beautiful old building, but especially a warm welcome to everyone online, uh, wherever in the world you are. Uh, very happy to have you here. Uh, of course, it's, it's still restricted time, so I'm looking at a, a very large room with people sitting uh, quite uh, wide apart, so thanks for keeping up uh, uh, the rules and regulations there. Uh, I'm very happy to, to host this event, to be part of uh, this, uh, this beautiful challenge that you've set up and you've ran for the last six weeks, and uh, very excited to, uh, to see the finals and to, uh, to be part of that. Um, as you said, this is all about cooperation, it's all about uh, energy, water uh, and that's exactly what we do here at, at, at DUB Academy so uh, as an institute we work very closely with the TU Delft that's also in this city uh, with companies in our country but specifically also in Japan and we have a little movie about that because normally we have a summer school when uh, people are allowed to travel again so to give you a little bit of a flavor of the cooperation between Japan 
and the Netherlands on offshore wind, which is, uh, is our forte here to give you a flavor of the cooperation to kick off this day. Here we go. wonderful video. We're still very happy to be here and being in cooperation with the OB Academy. So, um, well, after that, um, I'd like to say a little bit about what we're going to do today in the, final, uh, in the finals of Wet Skills part. Um, we'll start with a short introduction. You'll see a new person next to me <laughs> um, who I will give the floor shortly uh, after I've told you what we're going to do today. Um, we'll have the introduction of wet skills for those of you who are rather new to the program. Um, and also about wet skills Japan, how did it came together? And we'll have an interview with a very special guest, I'd like to say. Um, you probably already know who, but uh, you'll see him in a very short moment. Um, then we'll introduce the jury uh, of today. Uh, and then we'll start the pitches and the Q&A. Uh, of course, but the, the participants are the main uh, aspects of this uh, event and they've been working very hard, so we'd like to give the, the floor to them, of course. And um, then we'll have the kickoff of a wave to Paris after our um, pitches and a Q&A. And then we'll do the uh, awarding around 11, uh, 15, 11, 20. Okay, yes. Johan, hi, Hello. good to see you again. Um, it's been a very early morning for us both, yeah. <laughs> but good to see you here again. Um, tell us about wet skills. Yes, Lord. what thank is you it very about? Much. Uh, also, thank you to our partners. Uh, wet skills. Wet skills started in uh, 2010 uh, during the World Expo in Shanghai. We made a program where young talents uh, work together in mixed team um, on real life cases provided by sector partners. Sector partners that also wanted to have a real uh, idea where they could uh, uh, continue with. with. Uh, well, so wet skills is still that uh, after 11 years. Um, so uh, you will see now wet skills Japan, uh, which is an online version. Uh, normally, well, before Corona, we had uh, normally uh, <laughs> physical live versions. Um, but yeah, that's still wet skills. Wet skills is a two-week program where young talents 
in mixed teams work on real life cases and they provide an out of the box solution uh, to and then they are going to present during the finals and that's today yeah i've been honored to be one of the participants in taiwan and in taiwan, i you yeah one of the participants in yeah i had to say it was a life-changing yeah. experience it was really good and um well and what we also tried uh, well we uh, uh, well, we contribute to the SDGs, uh, being uh, bringing young talents, uh, working on water challenge, but also a bit uh, aligned uh, uh, challenges, um, but also the method of wet skills, uh, having respect, working together, which is also part of uh, uh, that. Um, and we also have ambassadors, ambassadors that are, uh, well, that also share our value, our ideas of uh, of wet skills, uh, bringing the new talent, but also having the intergenerational aspect, uh, working on sustainability uh, worldwide. Uh, actually, wet skills uh, uh, has been organized. Uh, uh, this is the 40, uh, uh, 48th event in the 40, uh, 24th country. Um, yeah, ambassadors. We have inside ambassadors, more in the, the water sector, but also outside ambassadors. Um, and one of them is uh, present here today, and that is uh, Kiran Badlu. Kiran Badlu, could you... Uh... Can we applaud? I don't yeah. know, yeah, okay, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, Kiran, Kiran, you just came uh, back from Japan. I think you brought something. Yeah, I yeah. still have it in the back, though, but okay. it's still there. With, uh, the golden medal? We'll show it later. <laughs> Could you could you tell us a bit why 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 uh, why do you share the values of bringing talents together? Why is it important? Well, for me personally, I like I'm an I'm an athlete. Yeah. Uh, I like to perform at the highest level, and it's really important to utilize every aspect of knowledge that is around. And I don't have it all, but there's multiple people that know a little bit. And if I am capable of combining them all and creating a team around me, um, I can have access to all this knowledge and use that to perform and that's well it's also a nice similarity between what's going on here you know you bring out different people with different ideas and you come to you know a solution or in my case a performance so that's how i use the, this this knowledge that is around me yeah and and, and the sustainability factor eh? so the, the making creating a better world how do you see that together with sport and what you're doing well so I travel the world a lot. I, I come to all these beautiful places, but mostly beautiful when you look at pictures yeah. and when you see it online, you're like, oh, this, this place is really cool. But I have actually been there and see what's going on behind the camera. And it's actually, there's a lot of pollution, there's a lot of problems. And the more I traveled over the years, the more I came to realize that that's actually what's going on instead of only looking at the pictures that I've seen. And it sort of triggered something in me to create awareness for it because it's something that is not seen by somebody that uh, doesn't have the opportunity to go there. So I use my sports career as a platform to showcase what's going on because I am able to go there um, and able to show some of the things that are not really easily accessed. Well, great. Thank you very much. Also, very thank you uh, for being our ambassador from Red Skills, but actually shared also with the Dutch Wave Maker. Uh, we brought you something. This is our normal logo, and well, we created a special one. Yeah, it's incomparable <laughs> to the one you already had, of course. It also has the arrow. Maybe you can explain <laughs> that. <to> <laughs> well, as you can see, I'm not sure if you see it, but it has a blue arrow on the head. <laughs> and um, for those of you that have been following me, <laughs> I walked around last week uh, looking quite similar to this character. So, uh, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Kieran. Thank, thank you so much. It's great to have him here, right? Yes. Yeah, it's awesome. Amazing. Okay, um, let's talk about the Wet Skills Japan event, Johan. Um, it's the first time we organized Wet Skills uh, with Japan. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us how, how did it came to be? Well, uh, Wet Skills uh, Foundation has about 35 supervisors all over the world. But you were one of the ones that had also the privilege to organize the first Wet skills, uh, Olympic wet skills ambition, and that was in South Korea. That was very successful, and uh, that's why we started also to already think of well, let's have one in Japan. So, well, just before Corona, we had partners, we had participants, we had programs, a lot of peace, but 
Uh, also, the accommodation was already set, but okay, well, we need to cancel it. And we're very happy that with our partners still, we could organize this uh, online event. Um, and so, um, well, um, in total, 12 participants um, from five different nationalities, but all working and living in uh, studying in uh, the Netherlands or Japan. They, uh, they are our group this time. Yeah. And, um, well, we have three cases uh, where they worked upon. Uh, one from the DOB Academy about offshore wind, one from uh, Waternet about uh, rainwater harvesting in urban areas, and the last one is from the, yeah, the uh, Water Authority uh, uh, Holland's Noordequartier about multi-layered flood safety, and especially the awareness part of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is, well, basically, we started 20, 29th of June with the kickoff. Then they worked um, about one and a half, two days per week up till now. And, uh, well, they all, uh, they got uh, experts coming on, trainings, uh, and now they, they are ready for the finals. But we made a nice movie about uh, our, our program, so what we did. And... Uh, Let's uh, have a yeah. Let's have look a look at the at the wrap up video of Wet Skills Japan 2021. That's why I'm delighted to announce the coming Wet Skills Japan event. We will work together with Japanese and international peers in diverse teams, coming with concrete solutions and becoming a sustainable community. I welcome you to Wet Skills Japan 2021. Good luck to all and enjoy your time. Cheers! try to help each other instead of focusing on their own job. Um, I think the most important thing is to get to know yourself. Okay. And how you respond how you respond in certain situations. And to accept that others do different. Get comfortable being uncomfortable. Do you have one last uh, well advice for, for uh, the, the wet skills participants? I think uh, find out what each other's strength was about your, your own strength and each other's strength. Okay. And work that way. Great. Put all your effort in things you're good at. So, I came up with the idea to build a glacier in a hot and dry desert, powered with solar cells. They generate electricity and at the uh, downside of the sculptures, the moisture in the air uh, reaches the sculpture, freezes, and so we have a glacier. And uh, this machine is uh, generating uh, 30, up to 30 liters of fresh water a day. And uh, we ship uh, the mini container to uh, uh, the World Expo in Dubai. And I so what I said before, it started all with, uh, with a study project uh, with Funky Dell on the Maldives. So it's um, 
It's a 1.3 hectare greenhouse that produces multiple varieties of lettuce and tomatoes. Also, uh, to really see, can we make this, this showcase eventually uh, for other island states to come? Um, I think, Floor, maybe we can start. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great wrap up, wasn't it? And from uh, an online virgin uh, version to make such a video, I'd say uh, uh, good job, uh, Johan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, right, so moving on to the next um, part of this finals and a very important one. Uh, we'd like to introduce the jury to you and perhaps if you already, uh, maybe you've already seen they've taken place at the table in front of us. Um, and we have actually two jury members uh, online from Japan as well. So let's introduce them. Um, I'll start with uh, Mr. Jos Jacobs from Eneco. Would you like to introduce yourself for you shortly, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, my name is Jos Jacobs. I work for a Dutch utility and I'm involved in offshore wind. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here. And then moving on to Monique Beckenutte from the Royal Netherlands Water Association. Monique. Yes, I'm uh, Monique Beckenutte, a director of the Royal Dutch Water Association and uh, also uh, chair of the West Kills Foundation. And uh, I'm happy to be here uh, on this 48th edition. Thank you, Monique. Very happy to have you here. And then moving on to uh, Mrs. Nicole van Sponsen from SCC Group. Welcome. Uh, I'm uh, working uh, at STC Group, that's a, a, a school, and I'm an uh, innovator and uh, working as an advisor of innovation and education. Thank you. Welcome, Nicole. Thank you. Moving on to Hans Kirsten from the Rotterdam Offshore Winds Coalition. Yeah, my name is Hans Kirsten. I represent uh, the offshore Rotterdam Offshore Wind Coalition. And that's a group of uh, front runners in offshore energy. Uh, and for myself, I'm a wind expert uh, from origin, but uh, moving up uh, to the offshore business. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And then we're moving on to our online jury members. Uh, let's see if we can get in touch with them. Um, Shall I start? Yeah, I would like to ask Professor Kansuker Furumai. Okay. I've already Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Hiroaki Furumai. I work at the University of Tokyo at a Department of Oven Engineering. So I'm very happy to join this uh, jury meeting. So I know many members uh, really actively worked on this uh, group work. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Professor Furumai. We're very happy as well. And then last but not least, Dr. Yuhai Nomura from Kyoto University, who has been uh, connected to us by Young Watch Professionals Japan, actually. Uh, yeah. Are we uh, in touch with her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. There he is. Good afternoon. Can you introduce yourself, please? Okay. Uh, I'm Yuhai Nomura. Uh, yeah. It's very nice to see you. Uh, I'm work as the assistant professor uh, in Chodo University now. Uh, okay, that's it. Uh, it's very nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us. All right, All right. Um, so that will be our jury for today. Um, 
I think uh, well, we've, can we expect now? yeah, we've talked long enough. I think we should start yeah. with the pitches well, and uh, one, one minute, what, one minute. what will they because judge them on, well, Johan? Uh, of course, what, is the, what can we expect? There are three teams. Each team has a pitch of two minutes, which is pre-recorded. So that will be shown. And afterwards, there's a Q&A with the jury. So the jury already got the poster that every team made. And based on that, and also, of course, the pitch, uh, they will ask some questions and they are going to have a look at five criteria. So the first criterion is uh, out of the box, how we not the visit. Uh, the second one is technical feasibility. The third one is uh, the e economic attractivity. So is there a business case behind? The fourth one is the uh, social and environmental context. And the fifth one is the quality of the pitch and poster. So that's already uh, yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the first uh, have an introduction of team number. Yeah, Which, yeah. So let's let's start the with the team? pitches. Yeah, we're gonna start with team two actually because we're out of the box and we'd like to start with another number when we are expected to do. Uh, so team number two, uh, we're gonna ask the participants from the team to shortly, very shortly introduce themselves. Then we'll watch the pitch and then we'll continue with the Q and A. Yeah, and all the all the participants are at home. Yeah. So. Sadly, they're not in the studio, but we have to ask them to join us digitally. Okay, starting off with uh, Misha Ahmad from Team 2. Misha, are you there? Yes, uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm Misha Ahmed. I am from Bangladesh and currently living in the Netherlands. And it's been a great, um, almost a month, I would say. So yeah, uh, looking forward uh, to the day. Best of luck to everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Misha. Thank you. Juliet Noppe. Good morning, Juliet. Good morning. Yeah, my name is Juliet Noppe. I'm from Germany. I study in the Netherlands, uh, governance of sustainability. And um, yeah, I also really looking forward to this event today and also good luck to the others. Thank you, Juliet. Moving on to Yin Tanaka. Uh, hello, this is Jin Tanaka. I'm from Japan. And uh, now I'm studying about the water relations. So I'm so glad to be here. As, uh, and also that I'm also cheering to the other uh, team members. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yin. Thank you. Uh, and then Floris Ter Beek. Hi everybody, my name is Floris de Beek. I'm from the Netherlands as well. Uh, I'm studying in Utrecht and I really enjoyed this web skills edition. Uh, so thank you for organizing and good luck to all teams. Thank you, Floris. We were glad you joined as well. And then last but not least, Naho Chuo, but she could make it to the finals actually. Um, and well, I think it's time to watch the video then. Out of sight, out of mind. The last time the Netherlands experienced an extreme flooding event was in the year 1953. In Japan, they experience floods more often. Therefore, in Japan, each household has an emergency kit. In the Netherlands, we are supposed to have these, but we don't. What is the difference? It's awareness and preparedness. In the Netherlands, people lack these because they think the dikes will protect them. But if we consider climate change and a rising sea level, the dikes will not be enough. According to the IPCC, a sea level rise of 2 meters by 2100 is not considered unlikely. In emergencies, people do not rise to the occasion. They sink to the level of their training. We, NG Waters, want to introduce the Droge Voeten Awareness Program. Our program is addressing children because we believe that children can be amongst the biggest change makers. They have the power to learn, innovate and share their knowledge throughout generations. We propose to integrate flood related topics in schools curriculum. The students will not only learn about flooding, but also to tackle adversities. The awareness program based on Japanese expertise will include an innovative data platform, a STEM rally, a first aid class, and intergenerational learning. What makes our strategy unique? We aim to create an integrated, continuous and culturally connected educational platform in collaboration with companies, schools, water authorities, 
and safety regions. The main advantages of this proposal are that youth awareness can be implemented both face-to-face -face and online with little costs. Besides, intergenerational learning includes all generations of society and makes the whole community more resilient and independent. One child, one teacher, one pen and one book can change the world. Well, if you were here, Floris, there would be a big applause for you, of course. Well, we can do that now. Well, right. <laughs> Good job, Floris. Um, well, is there any jury member who would like to ask a question to the team? Yeah. Well, interesting in this case is that uh, the children and the children are involved and uh, have a. Uh, 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 the, uh, a great awareness uh, in a great amount of time. Uh, my uh, question is, uh, what sort of quizzes and puzzles are you thinking about? Who would like to answer online? Maybe you can raise your hand. We have two representatives from the team who can answer the question. Yeah, is there one that can answer? Uh, yes, I can answer. I, I will okay. lower my hand. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, part of our water rally. So the water rally, um, we, we took an example from Japan. That means uh, we have a hazard map of the Den Helder region. And um, there are different stations. So uh, each station is at a point which is uh, at the... Um, at an evacuation place, for example, and these parts uh, have QR, QR codes. So with the QR code, uh, you can get to a web page, which uh, will provide a quiz with questions like, for, um, like for example, how would you react um, if, if there, um, there is a flooding? Where would you go? Like this, for example. And um, there would be also little videos would show like how the region where you are standing uh, would look like if there would be a flood. So it's more like uh, getting the awareness by uh, realizing, um, yeah, like like giving the people an idea how the area would look like if it would be actually actually flooded, and therefore uh, they could imagine better like where to go. Um, to add to Juliette, uh, I would like to uh, add a bit more. So the idea is, uh, as uh, in our pitch we did mention, like out of sight, out of mind, is bringing the information to the children as easily as possible. So uh, uh, to know where in Den Helder are the most um, uh, important landmarks that they could go to when there is uh, an extreme situation, evacuation centers or high, higher grounds, but not in a strict way, not in a panicking way, but in a in a more easy game friendly way. So that was the idea of Water Rally, which really worked well in Japan. And that was also our idea of bringing in a cultural uh, interest uh, in an existing system. Thank you. OK, thank you, Misha. Thank you so much. Uh, we have time for another question from the jury, perhaps also online. Um, not sure if our technique can see them online. If they raise their hand, let me know. Can I? Uh, Mr. Furamai has a question. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, the proposal of the uh, integrated education program for multi layer safety is really interesting. And I really uh, happy to know this kind of some idea come out from the team. But still, I have some questions. So the who manage or how maintain this educational program? So city or school or some community base? What is the uh, main organizers or manager of this system? OK, thank you. Professor Furamai can answer this question from the team. Oh. Perhaps Misha or Juliet. Um, 
I think I'll go ahead first, and Juliet can always, uh, yeah, uh, back up for me. Uh, so uh, the main uh, idea. Thank you for your question, uh, Mr. Furman. Uh, so the one of the strongest point of our uh, solution is that we don't look at one particular organization or institution for designing, let's say the first part that we uh, mentioned is the training in the schools. So our idea is to bring in, since Netherlands has, uh, particularly Den Helder, uh, has a lot of interest from both the government side, private sectors, uh, educational institution in terms of uh, flood safety awareness, Things. So what we try, what we try to propose, what we are proposing is that we bring in all these experts together in one platform to design this uh, um, integrated uh, system. So it's not just one course that would be uh, that would be introduced. Rather, in every existing courses like uh, geography, arts, chemistry, physics. Um, history, uh, these courses related to flooding would be integrated. So if that is the idea, so you can understand that um, uh, there is a role to play by different kinds of institutions uh, to design these courses. So it's our, our um, uh, strongest point to uh, here is also that we integrate different kinds of uh, in, uh, institutions and companies rather than one particular one. And uh, yeah, yep. I hope that answers the question. Thank you so much, Misha. Thank you. Uh, well, sadly, there's not enough time to answer all the questions. I, I bet there's many more questions. Um, but we have to move on to the next team, and that will be team number three. I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself again, um, and keep it short. Uh, and we'd like to start with Asami Nagao. Asami, good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon and uh, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Asami Nagao and work at a private consulting firm about uh, water and environment uh, in Japan. So um, I am impressed to join this event and that was great cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Asami. Thank you so much. Uh, up next is Silvio Kaiser. I believe you're calling from Peru still. Exactly, yes. Hello, I'm Sue. I'm from Germany and I'm studying water management uh, in the Netherlands and I wish um, good luck to everyone. Okay, thank you, Silvio. Uh, Martijn Nettebreyers. Good morning, Martijn. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Martijn Nettebreyers. Uh, I'm a Dutchman and I study urban environmental management in Wageningen. And um, I'm really looking forward to the finals today. And I hope everybody uh, gets what they deserve. <laughs> uh, well, we hope so too, Martijn. Uh, thank you. And then last but not least, Aurelia Biesje. Good morning, Aurelia. Hi, um, I'm Aurelia. I'm from France and uh, I'm studying in The Hague, a uh, Master of Governance of Sustainability alongside Juliet and Susan. So um, I'm really excited for this final and uh, good luck for everyone. Okay, thank you Aurelia. Well, let's look at the pitch of team number three by Waternet case. The latest major flood disaster caused by heavy rainfalls caused 63 lives in the city of Changshao in China after it rained three days in a row. Streets became uncontrollable rivers, homes flooded and people were trapped in the subway. The government estimated the economy cost to be at least $10 billion. Climate change is the reason why these extreme weather events will occur more frequently and destructive in the future. Cities like Amsterdam and Tokyo have already to fight with severe rainfalls. Data also shows an increase in heat waves and extreme droughts in Amsterdam. So how can Waternet Amsterdam use the existing infrastructure and assets of Amsterdam more effectively to harvest and reuse rainwater, as well as handling unusual rainfall in the future? Our solution exists of two parts. The upper part is an umbrella which can catch rainwater at a second, and the second part is a tank which stores the water. These two components resemble a tulip which in Netherlands are popular for, popular for and will add more beautiful art and green in the streets of Amsterdam. The harvested water will be used to maintain a green facade around the tulip and for gardens. With this solution can the city also take a heat stress and connect people to new climate change adaption solutions. 
An IT system will close the tulips if the tanks are full or empty the tulips before a major rain event occurs through the use of weather forecast data. The tulips can be placed in high pressure areas, public spaces, streets and gardens. If an unusual rainfall occurs and the tanks from the tulips are full, a barrier backup system will activate. The goal is to create water squares with self-activating barriers, which activate by flood water, not electricity. These water squares will store a huge amount of water in areas that have no use during heavy rain events. Also, they prevent the city of flash floods and more importantly give the sewage system valuable time to cope with the rainwater. Our idea has a return on investment of 60 years, which is the average lifespan of the sewage system. Also, our idea has a far larger water capacity than today's system. Therefore, the investment is well spent or returned in the case of any flooding event. We believe that the TULIP is the solution to solve the challenges in Amsterdam in the future. Thank you, Silvio. Applause for Silvio. And especially I'd like to mention Silvio was during this edition uh, uh, calling from Peru all the time. So for him, it was three in the morning every time we had the meeting and he was still there. So good job, Silvio. Um, who has a question from the jury? Monique, Monique Beckenetta, go ahead. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. It looks really nice. It's almost like a form of art. So I think it would be nice to see this in the city. But I think it takes uh, a lot of uh, uh, space. Uh, did you also uh, think about integrating this into existing buildings or buildings to be uh, new buildings to be built? Okay, thank you, Monique. Raise your hand if you can answer the question from the team. Who takes the floor? Sami, would you like to ask this question? Yeah, Martijn. Yeah. Oh, well, then, <laughs> then let me do it. Um, so yes, we've, uh, we've thought uh, about this. Um, currently, uh, the streets don't have that much space in Amsterdam as it's an old city. Uh, so the large tulips um, would take up too much space in the smaller streets of Amsterdam. But on the, uh, the street where there's much more space, where there's uh, a more green space, you could build the trees. And uh, for example, near the Olympic Stadium, which was the area we focused uh, uh, on, uh, there is quite enough space for multiple trees to be built. Um, however, the trees also have the advantage of uh, uh, have, they can be implemented with other technologies, such as a uh, smart lamp, uh, lamping system, lighting system, and therefore they could also replace the current lighting system in the streets, uh, replacing, oh, standing in their uh, spots, standing in their place, creating a bit more space for the tulip trees to be placed in the smaller streets as well. But the main idea was for these smaller streets to uh, have the second uh, solution so with the, the self-activating barrier okay thank you thank you martin another question from the jury perhaps over here yeah, yeah. Um, you have uh, studied uh, uh, tulips separate uh, structures in the uh, open area um, have you also considered using the roofs for storing water in the tank um, yes yes we have um, during our talks with the commissioner, he, we uh, received some information about this. And unfortunately, the roofs in Amsterdam are not fit for uh, any rain capture or rain storage. Oh, I, I thought the, 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 the capture part was in a tank. Uh, yeah, the, the capture part is in the tank uh, of the tulip. Uh, uh, storage facility? Sorry, I didn't understand you uh, very well. Is, is the tulip the only storage facility of water or is there some, some underground tank in your proposal? Uh, okay, um, no, For, in our proposal, the, the tulips is the main uh, storage facility. However, the tulips can be um, uh, connected to, a, to the water system that MSM is proposing um, that connects bodies all over the, the area to the, to the rainwater storage system creating even more storage capacity. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Um, again, sadly, we have to leave it with two questions. Otherwise, the program will uh, be a bit too long. Um, we would love to have the whole day, but let's go to team number three. Uh, no, team number one, sorry. The one that DOB Academy is waiting for uh, to see, of course. Um, team number one, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Um, starting with Suzanne Vellekoop. Suzanne, good morning. Hi, good morning. I'm Susan. I'm studying governance of sustainability. And um, yeah, I've been really enjoying this Vet Skills program. And thank you for bringing so many uh, experts and enthusiastic students together today. Great. Thank you for being here with us, Susan. Natsumi Sakuma from Japan. Hi, I'm Natsumi Sakuma and I'm studying urban environmental engineering in Tokyo. And today I'm excited to share work and get feedbacks. Great, thank you Natsumi. And last but not least, Trudy Ruiter. Thank you so much. My name is Trudy Ruiter. I'm uh, from the Netherlands and I study env environmental sciences uh, here in Leeuwarden, at the Van Halladenstein. I really enjoyed uh, this Red Skills event and I'm uh, Really looking forward to share our work with you. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. Great to hear, Trudy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, well, then it's time to look at your pitch. We're building a lot of new wind turbines, and that's great. We're expanding green energy, but it also means that by 2050, 100,000 of those wind turbines will have reached their end of life globally. So this huge material stream will go to land and we need some better purpose than landfill uh, for this high quality material. And that's what uh, the web platform Blueprint seeks to do uh, by disclosing essential information about all the material that is at sea and soon to be decommissioned and also bringing buyer and seller together. How, for example, um, if I want to build a circular house, I can go to the web platform, see what's available, what size, and reserve the right parts um, to use as a roof. And by, we will start this web platform uh, by just making it work on a small scale. So for example, Luchter Duinen will be decommissioned in 2040. And uh, from having the platform around that, we can build it further and expand the assortment based on supply and demand with the ultimate goal that before any structure at sea is decommissioned, all parts from monopile to engine will already have their next destination. And in the future there is also a possibility to expand with an area passport, which de just describes essential information about the surrounding area of a wind turbine park, uh, which is available for mussel farming or seaweed farming, etc. And financially speaking, we need some investment upfront to build a pla platform, and this can be um, this can be earned back through a commission fee when materials are bought, or consultancy fees for tailor-made advice. There are so many bright ideas to bring climate neutrality and circularity together, and by increasing the transparency, we can bring those ideas to life even faster. Okay, great. Looked great, Susan. Applause for Susan. Right, questions from the jury. Perhaps we can start uh, online this time with Furumai or Namura having a question. Raise your hand if you do. Um, otherwise, raise your hand okay. in the studio. Ah. ah, Namura has a question, I see. Dr. Namura. Okay. Um, thank you for the interesting inter interesting presentation. And uh, my question is uh, that uh, this team proposed the uh, uh, reuse way of the blade composite, uh, but the, how about the reuse of the tower tabular steel? Can you provide some information if you have if the team have? Sorry, did you understand the question, uh, uh, team? Team one, did you get the question? Oh, sorry, it's, uh, the connection is not really good. I didn't catch it, sorry. Okay. 
Uh, so you want to hear the question again, Trudy? Yes, please. <laughs> yes? Okay, yeah. Uh, Mr. Namura, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, okay. Um, um, uh, thank you for the uh, thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, the team, uh, the team uh, talked about the reuse way of the uh, wind place, right? And uh, uh, can you provide the information uh, about the reuse of the tower turbulence too? The information about the tower turbulence team. team. Okay. Trudy, are you? Uh... Okay, or I'm going to do my best. <laughs> yeah, the wind turbine exists of different kind of parts. Um, we mentioned uh, the wind uh, the wind blades. Uh, they uh, consist of a composite, but we also have this tower. And I think uh, Dr. Namuro means this this tower. Uh, it's made of a steel. And um, well, we actually need a cooperation. Um, also from the, the builders of these wind turbines to receive the material information uh, and the weights. And uh, this, for example, can be done by the BIM model, this is a building information model. And um, for example, a reuse option uh, that's already been used with these towers is uh, for uh, kindergartens to uh, use these pipes or use them for a glide, uh, stuff like that. And I am sure there are a lot more ideas to, to come up with how to use this uh, turbo steel pipes. I hope that answers your question. And if I may uh, add a little bit, the main advantage of um, reusing uh, these uh, steel structures as a whole thing instead of melting them and then making it into a, another uh, shape is that the melting of steel requires incredibly high temperatures which is not possible or uh, it's not really possible to do this with green energy at scale yet that's still a big um, big challenge so um, by reusing uh, the, the steel pipes uh, it can be reused somewhere else on land, for example, in kindergartens, or uh, the information can be shared amongst other people uh, building turbines at sea. So uh, it can also be reused there. Okay. Thank you both for answering the question. Um, we still have time for one more question. Uh, yes, over here. Yeah, I have a question. You present uh, one uh, online platform uh, for a, a lot of activities. Where do you think the main uh, customer is? Uh, who has the highest need? Who wants this platform the most? So where are you focusing on? Okay. Who's the main customer? Who wants to? I can answer that question. Not to me. Um, yes. Um, we haven't uh, thought of like the main customer because the idea is to bring uh, potential users that weren't already in the marine economy industry. But uh, thinking about the characteristic of the blade and how heavy it is and how strong it is, uh, we think that, uh, for example, engineers or stakeholders in the construction industry or industries that use materials for like interiors and small infrastructures will be um, potential users, especially for the material part. For, um, this is also the reason why we want to start building an online platform in a small way. So uh, then you can see uh, who is attracted to it, what are their needs, and then expand based on that. And uh, for example, for the material passport, um, it's basically everybody that wants to lower their material footprint. Uh, when we started this case, we were thinking, um, okay, if I want to build a tiny house, or if I want to build this, how do I, how do I reach um, materials? Who should I call? Who can I contact? And then um, we started to notice that that was actually uh, quite hard to, to really uh, get details of, of the exact width 
uh, but also to get in contact with uh, people uh, building this at sea and ask if it can be reused. That is, um, so that's the, the main value we would bring. Okay, great. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, team one, for answering the questions. And uh, I think, sadly, already time is up. So I think we have to wrap up this final uh, session. Um, thank great. you. It was great, right? Yeah. I would say that was quality. I think the jury has a very hard task. Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe one of you can already have a short reflection before we go to the break. Well, I think everyone looks happy <laughs> <laughs> and very focused to uh, so make during it. the next program part we will well you you need to decide together with our uh, two guests from uh, from uh, Japan who will be the winning team yeah. and then uh, quarter past 11 20 past 11 we will come back for the awarding ceremony but first we have a uh, short break and then we will go to the to, to the next program part, which is the kickoff of uh, the wave to Paris. Yeah. Okay, but thank you very much, and uh, we'll yeah. see you in a bit, hopefully. Yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Yes, welcome back. Um, the exciting moment is here. Uh, we are now at the awarding session of the finals. So I'm pretty sure everyone's very excited. Uh, well, we are at least. Especially the ones uh, at home, our participants. Yeah. Um, well, uh, well, to build up the tension a bit more, uh, we <laughs> first have some uh, uh, speakers online and here in the studio. We're going to talk to the case owners um, and to Professor Kuomai. And uh, to start, actually, uh, we have a live connection with the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Japan. And actually, the ambassador himself is here, Mr. Jan van der Tempel, uh, van der Vliet, sorry. Peter van der Vliet. Peter van, Peter van der Vliet. <laughs> sorry, Too many a, names. <laughs> Peter van der Vliet. <laughs> Do we have a connection with him? I think I have to say good. Yeah, afternoon. can you hear me? Evening, even. Ah, the hi. Hi, Peter. Hi, Hello. can you hear me and can you see me? Yes. Hello, Peter van der Vliet here, live from the studio of the Dutch Embassy in Tokyo. Uh, I'm so glad to have the chance to say a few words uh, at the, the finals of this Olympic edition of uh, the Wet Skills Japan Challenge. And I realize I am standing uh, between you and the, uh, the announcement of the, uh, the winners. So I will keep it short. But I just wanted to say that I have tremendously uh, enjoyed the program so far. It's good to see the athletes, uh, Kieran Batlou and uh, Liliane de Geus uh, back in the Netherlands. Congratulations on, on their top performance and on the gold medal for, for Kieran. I heard uh, someone say during the program, we should go for gold. Well, today is another gold day for the for TMNL in Tokyo because Shanna Baspenning just won the women's uh, Kairin here in Tokyo. So it's going really well. Um, I also like that little video with the little kids talking about climate change and water challenges. So congratulations on, the, on a great uh, program. Now, six weeks ago, during the kickoff of this first Wet Skills Japan event, I expressed the hope that the participants would work together to make a, a difference in the, the water energy food nexus. Well, after seeing the, the pictures today, I'm, I'm convinced that they can actually make, make a difference. So I would like to congratulate all teams for their, their excellent work. Well done. I think it's inspiring to see ambitions, ambitious students and young professionals from Japan and the Netherlands work together intensively and come up with possible solutions for the problems that were the focus of this wet skills event, and namely the multi-layer flood safety, and the urban water development for climate adaptation, and the multiple use of offshore wind parks. And who knows, you know, some, some of the ideas pitched today 
could actually bring us a step closer to reaching carbon neutrality by 2050, a commitment that both Japan and the Netherlands have made. You once again prove that working in diverse teams can lead to more creative ideas and that Dutch-Japanese cooperation and the combining of skills and knowledge and experience and critical thinking can lead to outcomes where the sum is more than its individual parts. And that is exactly what is needed now and in the future. I would once again like to thank the main organizers, of course, of this successful event, uh, Wet Skills Foundation, DOB Academy, and Dutch Wavemakers. And you have a bunch of really, really cool ambassadors. It is so important to involve the next generations and to let them contribute to water, energy, food solutions, and breakthroughs. And that is exactly what this Wet Skills event has done. I understand there are plans to organize a physical Wet Skills program in Japan in the near future. And that would be, of course, wonderful indeed, as far as I'm concerned. So I won't prolong the suspense any longer. Uh, I look forward to the announcement by the jury of the, the winning team. To be honest, I, I mean, if it were up to me, I couldn't pick a winner. It was so, so close. So I'm really curious what the final decision will be. Thank you very much and good luck to you all. Thank you very much, Peter van der Vliet. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Yes, and before we go to the to the well the jury announcement, I would like to ask um, Professor Furumai from the Tokyo University to to have some words about the reflection of wet skills. Uh, Professor Furumai is a great supporter. He did an, uh, a keynote uh, uh, at the kickoff of wet skills, but also during the the wet skills uh, event, he helped the team. So, um, Professor Furumai, I hope you hear me. And uh, please share your thoughts, your experience of uh, of last six weeks about this wet skills in Japan. Well, I hope. Well. I remove the mute. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> well, and don't okay. say something about the jury. Eh? That's for the. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So. Uh, first of all, I would like to express uh, appreciation to the Wet Skill Foundations and the co collaborator to organize and some uh, manage this uh, really attractive and a fantastic training program uh, for six uh, weeks. So Wet Skills Japan 2021. So. Unfortunately, it is the online some program, but I'm sure that all the participant deepen the communication among the participants and also uh, really enjoy the discussions on the some specific themes, especially they try to propose the new novel idea or some uh, concrete solution to solve the problem related to water and energy. So uh, today we have the final meeting and the, some, everybody present the work, then it is really valuable experience for them. So I hope uh, they continue to the communication through this uh, program. Well, Thank you very much. Uh, I'll be in touch with the uh, University of Tokyo and uh, with you for uh, coming events in, uh, in wet skills and other activities. Hopefully also Japanese uh, participants could come over to the Netherlands or other events uh, worldwide. Uh, yeah, and I would say uh, thank you very much again. And while well, we have two more guests to have a short interview with. Yes, exactly. Uh, we're gonna build more tension uh, for the participants. <laughs> We ask for your patience. Um, we're gonna invite the case owners uh, to the stage here, um, just to have a short reflection and to ask how they've experienced this Wet Skills Japan. Yes, come over to the floor, please. We're very happy you're here. Uh, perhaps from the case owner, Hendrik, would you like to join as well? 
going to surprise you with this, well, but <laughs> we'd like to all have the, the case owners, uh, all three of them, and at the stage. <laughs> yeah, it's a competition, so keep your one and a half meter distance. That's a good one as well. <laughs> right, um, well, maybe to start off with uh, Annette Lablance. Annette, hi. Hi. Good morning. Thank you. I'd like to say. Um, you're from the waterboard uh, Hollands Noorderkwartier, so team two. Yes, the best team. The best team. <clears throat> Definitely. We're still very uh, subjective on that. <laughs> uh, can you tell us uh, how did you experience this event? Ooh, in one word, it was great. Uh, not, not one word, maybe okay. more. <laughs> but it was amazing. And I, I really liked uh, the interaction in the group. It's a digital one, so uh, it's very difficult. And it's not only in two weeks, a very intensive focus period, but it's during six weeks. And they have to look for each other on different times. Um, and uh, well, it's amazing what they achieved. So yeah. Huge yeah. compliment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what did you learn from them? Can you <clears throat> say anything oh, no. about that? Uh, <laughs> I was especially inspired by one of the team members. Um, because she was telling uh, how, how the whole country was dealing with uh, floods. And it's so different how we um, interact with them in the Netherlands. And I think the balance is, is great. And the whole team, they focused on the, the best parts on flood defense in that country, and they combined it in the solution. And I think that's what Flex failed before. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Well, well, well said, Annette. Thank you so much. Moving on to uh, Mr. Frank Tibbe. Frank, you are uh, working for Waternet in Amsterdam, Waternet Utility, um, and also a proud team member of WetSkills, uh, I can say. Uh, we work together, so I know. Uh, um, <laughs> You're going to Romania, Bob. Yeah, we're going to do the Romania uh, in September uh, edition. Uh, but for now, for the Japan edition, how did you experience it so far? Yeah, I can also say great. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I had the honor to be the case owner uh, on behalf of Wardenet for Japan. Um, and so, yeah, it was great to see the team is so enthusiastic in, in, in well, quite a challenging Red Skills event. It's digital, different time zones. There are three different time zones. So every meeting, one person was in the middle of the night. So <laughs> they still stay very motivated <laughs> and ask uh, me and also my colleagues, because we are with, well, 2,000 colleagues at Bordenet, so I try to bring them in contact with the experts. Uh, a lot of questions which, yeah, were very interesting to think about. And also what you see in the solution is that it's not only a technical point of view, but it is also mentioned, uh, it has some components of art, for example, and I like, uh, apart from the technical points, how they look at the, the yeah, finding a, a out of the box solution for the question we state. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, was it was it difficult to for them to get out of the box, you think, or what they? No, not, not really, so, because, uh, of course, I have seen more Red Skills event, and sometimes it's, it's hard to, to think outside the box, and uh, for the teams, but uh, that's also very hard for us working at Wardenet. We have a lot of luggage with us, so we ask the young professionals think outside the box, and, and they, well, from the first meeting I had with them, they did it. So I was very happy. So to good. Yeah, good to hear. Have that. Yeah. yeah, good to hear. Last but not least from the DOP Academy, Hendrik Goos. Hi, Hendrik. Good morning. Good morning. I surprised you there, didn't I? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> no, of yeah, course. I'm, I'm full of surprises myself. Oh, good, good. I, I thought you were. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, of course, William is the main case owner, so, uh, but he's busy with the technique, uh, technical part today. Yeah. So just from your point of view, what, what did you like about it so far? Yeah, I like the, the whole setup. I uh, like to work together with uh, Wet Skills and the uh, Dutch Wave Makers. I thought the, the three of us. Uh, it was a good, great event. Um, I also uh, participated as being an expert uh, on one of the uh, on the days, and that was very good um, to to see how the teams are working together and the different questions that they came up with. And also, what I learned from them is that they actually um, had time for each other. So they uh, let the one person answer, uh, ask the question and then yeah. have, have a small debate. But uh, there wasn't chaos all over the Zoom line. It was just uh, perfect and everybody just let it, uh, each other speak and there was mutual respect. I think that was very good to see. Great. Yeah. 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 I remember we had the, the brain hurricane uh, 
That's what, events. That's what, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. couldn't remember yeah. the, the name. No, the brain it's, hurricane. Yeah, it's a difficult one. Yeah. yeah, we like something different than the brainstorm. Yeah, it's a hurricane in their head. Yeah, I was also fond of the, one of the. Uh, it was actually not the invention, but uh, my hometown, Den Helder, uh, was mentioned. I, I was born there, so I knew a little bit about uh, the situation there, which, which kind of helped, I guess. Oh, good. And the multi-use case um, is very uh, new, and of course that's something that we are working on together with RVO uh, to get that all sorted and get different parties together. So uh, it's really good to see how these um, students are taking that up and uh, participating. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, case owners, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, maybe the short notice, uh, case owners like these organizations are very vital to our program because they bring in those those challenges, real life cases, and also support the, the team. So uh, very nice. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, we can't do wet skills without them. So uh, very happy they uh, they joined us. But now. but now, it's the moment's here. I'd like to invite the chair of the jury, Mrs. Monique Beckenutte, to the floor to give us, well, the final remarks from the jury meeting. Yeah. Monique, take the floor. Yeah, first of all, I would uh, congratulate uh, the, on behalf of the jury from Japan and in the Netherlands, the, the all three teams, they were fabulous. It was really hard to, uh, to decide upon which, was, uh, which will win this, uh, this challenge uh, today. Um, well, what I would like to mention is that the enthusiasm and the, the quality of the solutions were great. So that's, that's for all three teams uh, is, is the case. Uh, also, uh, the, within the jury, we discussed that we see a lot of potential to, do, to make next steps. The solutions are, uh, yeah, um, they can be uh, brought further into the what's next uh, issues. Uh, we think that perhaps pilots or combinations from the three uh, uh, cases can be uh, can be very interesting. For example, uh, the tulips can be uh, made of the the blades of the the windmills. <laughs> Just a, a combination or um, uh, the awareness. Uh, of from one of the cases, the tulip is a really nice a way of uh, make visible what is happening eh, uh, with the integrated solution. So we thought that there were, were a lot of uh, there's a lot of potential, also a synergy uh, between the cases. So I hope we can bring this further on uh, together with the problem uh, owners, uh, and that we can uh, yeah uh, that it's not ending uh, right here. Um, in, in general, we think that uh, the social and environmental um, context was great with all the three teams, so that's, that didn't make a difference. The feasibility, we think that uh, um, yeah, one of the teams were, was much more uh, feasible, I'll come back to that later. The economic attractiveness, that's quite difficult. Uh, for all the cases, it was a, a really challenge to make it uh, economic uh, attractive. Um, the quality of the pitches was good, and uh, I think uh, the third team, case three, was uh, really nice. Uh, but I uh, heard that they have a graphic designer <laughs> within yeah. the team, so that <laughs> helps. <laughs> so that was really nice. So compliments to you all. It was a close call. So, um, yeah, it was di really difficult to, uh, to make uh, the decision, but in, in the end, we agreed upon the one winner, and that's... Uh, the winner of Wet Skills, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, Japan. They, they were called the best team, but that was a bit biased, but we thought they were the best team today as well. Case two. Team two. Team two. <laughs> <laughs> This wet skills is of course aligned to the Olympics. <laughs> so uh, everyone, uh, yeah, at home, everyone will get uh, a gold medal. Um, well, no one is here, but only your case owner is here. So Annette, <laughs> on behalf of your team. Uh, and perhaps in the meanwhile, we can ask. Thank you. 
participants. Thank you, team, and with the audience as well. Congratulations, and uh, on behalf of the whole jury, and uh, congratulations to your team. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe one of you, uh, Floris. How are you feeling? <laughs> How are you feeling? Yeah, great. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure as well for uh, giving us the honor to be the winner this time and also congratulations to the other teams of course because you all had very innovative solutions as well so uh, yeah a great ending for this wet skills for our team i think <laughs> thank you hey, Jean, maybe you can add yeah yeah <laughs> yeah thanks i'm so surprised to get uh, the first prize so but i i know that everyone gets uh, gets high uh high qualities or the suggestions so i'm so glad to be here thanks so much Thank you. Other remarks from the team, perhaps? Yay! Well, Yay! <laughs> okay, great. Okay, well, thank you very much. Congratulations to the team, of course, to everyone who participated. Yeah. We're very happy you joined. Um, speaking for myself, I, my point of view, I, I really liked your enthusiasm and, and your effort you put in this. So, so thanks so much for joining and your your enthusiasm throughout the, the program. Yeah, I would like to thank the jury, huh? <clears throat> Physical Life here, thank you very much for being here. And also huh? online, uh, our Japanese uh, uh, friends. Uh, and also Monique, thank you very much. And maybe a, sp a special moment, uh, well, you're involved already for eight, nine years with Red Skills, very enthusiastic. And I'm so happy that you always have the first step, always, uh, uh, well, enthusiastic about wet skills, about the context. Um, have, um, well, we, we are going to organize the Amsterdam International Water Week in November, had the uh, wet skills, but also in, uh, other, uh, well, the, the, the whole event, uh, integrate them. And, well, you, you always put uh, the, the intergenerational dialogue, you always think it's very important, uh, you stimulate that, and I would like to thank you uh, on behalf of the wet skills Foundation. Uh, yeah. to, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. And, and, then, and then the last moment, um, I would like to also thank, uh, of course, Floor and the others uh, being uh, supervisors. Uh, Michiel and uh, Joanna are uh, online, but uh, thank you, Floor, for all the, all the help, support, and uh, what you did. And I would like to thank uh, the Dutch Wave Makers and the DOB Academy. Maybe you also have uh, some last reflections. Always last reflections there, <laughs> Johan. Uh, uh, thanks also from, uh, uh, from us. I think also a big thanks to everyone being here physically. Uh, finally opening up in the Netherlands. So good to have the audience in the room because that really gives the feel that we uh, were used to and we need to grow into again. Thanks to everyone online. A big thanks to the digital team for making this work. This was uh, quite tough. So maybe a big applause there. <laughs> I'm very inspired and I think the whole goal, goal was to get that inspiration across and I think we did a very, very good thing today. So thanks to all the organizers, thanks to you all and let's keep that wave into the future, into that renewable energy that we all need and we look forward to seeing you on any next event wherever in the world. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Well, in 10 days, Red Skills Denmark will start in Copenhagen, and after that, Hungary, and we're still looking for participants, so if you're watching, please uh, go to our website. Um, last but not least, we forgot the participants, to thank them. Uh, I know you're all online, we saw you on the screen uh, as well. Thank you very much, you did an amazing job uh, last six weeks. Uh, very interesting uh, uh, and inspiring solutions. And well, and you were all the time there uh, working very hard. Thank you very much. You will receive a uh, certificate, uh, of course. Okay, and last but not least, thank you, Johan, for uh, organizing this together with me and all the others. Yes. Uh, it, it's been a challenge online, but uh, I think we managed really well with all the partners yeah. and uh, hosting us. So, it was uh, a really nice example of Bengazi, I would say. I learned that word today. You can Google it if you don't know what it means. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you everyone for joining and hope to see you soon in live and over here as well. Thank you, thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.